On this week's episode, Peloton announces a pause on production, but we also see an increase, price increase on tread and bike. And we'll discuss the new David Bowie artist series going down, the return of Alex Toussaint's ride to greatness, and much, much more. Welcome to Pelo Buddy TV, a show for the Peloton community by the Peloton community. Here are your hosts, Amanda Siegel and John Pruitt. Welcome to episode 66 of Pelo Buddy TV, a show for the Peloton community by the Peloton community. I'm John Pruitt, joined as always by my co-host, Amanda Siegel. Hey now, Amanda. Hey, John. How are you? <laughs> Doing good. What's oh, going on? Oh, <laughs> boy, John. <laughs> the, the tea, the tea, it sounds like the tea is hot. What a week it was. I don't know. I don't know what makes tough stories. My mega my mega milestone Tuesday or um or the shit show that's going on with Peloton right now, huh? <laughs> no. But let's let's pop has, some popcorn and, and get right into it. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, we, 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 who knows? We may be out of a gig soon. I mean, if this continues oh, to, um, if this on. continues to go, let, let's hope not. Right, <laughs> let's hope not. But okay, um, yeah, yeah it, it was definitely um, a pretty awesome week for me, despite the news story. It was all about Seglo Three this week, um, <laughs> and. Um, <laughs> And it was, it was great. I mean, I have to say, John, what an experience. I mean, I I do have to say that I got pretty lucky that I was able to do what I did in kind of lining up all those, um, you know, all those milestones the way that I did. And um, it in a way exceeded my expectations as far as, um, you know, just accolades and fun and emotions. Um yeah, it was like a really, really cool day. And it, it really showed me, you know, three years into this journey, um, just how dedicated and, you know, how much how much I love it. Um, and I was really proud of myself. So um, it, it was fun. It was fun. It was definitely a an exhausting day, uh, but, um, but tons, <laughs> tons like of fun. Sounds just like a typical day for me. <laughs> I guess so. For you, for you, yes. For you, yes. For well, me, there I'm, I'm was curious different. to hear. I'm curious to hear how the rest of the milestone classes went because I was only on your 2000th ride yeah. on the ends. Yeah, ride. yeah. Was it? Yeah, it was 80s. So it was awesome. I mean, I started. You know, I started the day um, with a DT, and it, it just all worked mm. out because she's she has Tuesday, she has her morning meditation. And then she has a flow. So I got, you know, jumped yeah. on the morning meditation and, of course, got a you know, lovely shout out and then did the flow. And, of course, she goes, oh, my God, you're back for another milestone. I mean, she, like, totally, like, kind of, you know, kind <laughs> of got dipping. it. Double dipping there. <laughs> She's like, back for another milestone. Yeah. So that was kind of fun. And then, um, and then I actually had to leave the flow, like, five minutes early because – it, it kind of collides with Leanne's nine o'clock ride oh, on a Tuesday morning. It, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, so jumped up because I had to, I mean, I had to make sure I was in the pre show of, you know, of, the, of, of that ride. Um, <laughs> well, I had it and, recorded I, in case you got that pre show shout out. I had it recorded. To, no, but, you're so uh, sweet. but she saved, she saved it for, for the ride once the ride started. She saved it for the ride. And um, she's just such, I mean, she is honestly such a sweetheart. And I had released again kind of my, my mild milestone trilogy <laughs> of the uh, milestone shout outs over, you know, over the years. And um, it's, it's uh, just so fun. It's just so fun. I mean, it is, it is, uh, you know, I got away from it. She actually met, she messaged me because she watched it and she, she goes, Oh my God, if I say, come on one more time. <laughs> <laughs> I know she's you got, know, the, I mean, Leanne's got to mix it up a little bit. <laughs> she's, exactly, <laughs> she's, she's exactly. either does the yes to you or, Oh, come on. on the shout out, she got to throw so, in a new phrase. <laughs> She's got to find a new place. She was, so, she was just, oh my God, she was amazing. And um, yeah, I mean, I got really emotional. I mean, it was great. And then she oh, had an arms right after. So that was awesome. Yeah. Had, it was an awesome, I mean, it was just an awesome arms. And, you know, obviously, obviously these are all in my, in my picks of the week, but, um, but yeah, she had yeah. an arms and, and that was a great strength, um, a great strength. And then, um, and then, yeah. And then I jumped on John's, um, on John's walk, um, and he too. I mean, it was just—it was so lovely. And it was funny though because 
he didn't call out that many shout outs and he kind of did 200s. And then um, he had said to me, what do you want to hear? You know, what do you want me to play? And I'm like, I'm a huge Usher fan. And um, so he played, he, he played DJ, you know, DJ in the club tonight. And um, he did my shout out then. Uh, so, but it was like at the end of the walk and I'm like, I think he's going to miss me. Like, I think he's going to miss me. <laughs> so I miss, So afterwards I messaged him. I go, you really had me on the edge there. He goes, yeah, as if. I would never have heard the end of it if I missed you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, so much side so, eye. I, I do. I know. I know. So, yeah. So it was just, it was, it was just awesome. And, um, you know what I said, I said something in a post that I, I put on social. I said the best part about it all, John, is we get to do it all over again. You know, like that wasn't the end. This is just, you know, just part of the journey. Right. And each yeah, time we get on and we work, Correct. And I, that's, I yeah. think that in itself is just such an amazing accomplishment is that that wasn't the end. It wasn't like, oh, I ran my marathon and I'm done. We keep going, you know, and, and, right. um, and until the next, until the next one. But I don't know if I'd be able to pull something like that off again, where you, you know, where I kind of coordinated those. Yeah, the stars um, really perfectly aligned six, there. It was, it was fantastic. It was truly, truly fantastic. So thank you. Thank you everybody for your support and your messages and your um, dedication. And um, I know I, I, I felt like a celebrity in my own right, having folks jump on and be part of it. And it was, it was really cool. It was really cool. So thank you. And thank you for your um, high fives. I yeah. even had, I even had Chris Lewis jump on at the crack of dawn and, and gave me some pillow buddy high fives. And yes, um, I saw him pop in for the drive-by high five. I, lo I loved it. I loved it because I know he's not a huge, uh, you know, Leanne rider. So um, it was fun to see him on there. So yeah, it was, um, it was definitely um, a, a wonderful, wonderful week for me. So, um, and great. hopefully crossing fingers, guys, I um, will be back in Maryland um, on Monday and um, they're supposed to be coming to fix my tread on Tuesday. So let's hope that they that. Oh, good. let's let's hope that they haven't laid off all their service technicians <laughs> by the no. end by the end of the weekend and my um and my crew you know pitch hopefully, up on yeah on, hopefully on you don't get the dreaded reschedule uh, email which nah, I've, I I've personally I, experienced I, plenty of times doubt it at this point I'll be very shocked if I do but who knows so I guess you'll you'll know more next week on the show as to whether or not I finally have a fixed tread and we're ready to get rolling but being down in 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 florida i've been able to just use the gym tread and um yeah, yeah. and it works it works fine i mean it, you know you get to do it and get to keep you know keep going so that's um so that's been that's been really nice you get the job, um, you get and the how job about, done it's not as fun you do it's not as fun and you know i i miss seeing you know seeing my cadence and and my stats you yeah. know doing better but um it'll be fun to see when i get back though because i have continued to work out so it'll be fun to see when i get back if i have improved and you know if i hit any prs or anything once i get back so um so that'll be that'll be fun how about you you have a good week Good week. A lot of, lot of tread, uh, a lot of workouts on the tread. So I, my picks of the week are very tread based. Nice. Um, I actually took, I actually took a rest day for, for once on Sunday with a long, you know, it was a nice long, um, weekend for me, you know, with Martin Luther King Jr. Day this past week. So, uh, yeah, I decided to take it easy since there was no Jen Sherman class last Sunday. Um, so that the, what I did on my rest day, that's part of my pick of the week. So we'll, Stay tuned Good. for that. I'm but looking yeah, forward to hearing week. that. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, I guess, um, as always, folks, before we get started with the news, we always like to remind you how you can keep up to date with all of our content across all of our platforms. Every episode is released on our YouTube channel. Just hit the subscribe button at the bottom right-hand side of the video and hit the notify button so that you never miss an episode. And if you want to just simply listen to us, we're on all traditional podcast platforms. Just search Pillow Buddy TV, click subscribe, hit notifications so you never miss an episode. And we always love to hear from you. So please leave us a review. We love to receive feedback from you on how we can improve the show. So any comments or suggestions are always greatly appreciated. 
Absolutely. And of course, finally, we are on Facebook and Instagram. So um, if you have not um, hit that, you know, that search for Pelo Body, make sure that you do and follow us so that you never miss anything um, in the news. Um, and now, John, I guess let's get on with the show. First, let's do a rundown of the latest Pelo news. Before we dive into our original top news story, since we recorded this show, two things have happened. First, Peloton released an early estimate of their quarter two 2021 earnings data, which weren't scheduled to be released until February 8th. We'll talk about this later on in the show. This appears to have been done in order to calm the markets and stop the stock price from dropping more. The estimates show Peloton's revenue for the quarter was within the guidance called, and their adjusted EBITDA losses were less than expected, which are both positives. However, Peloton's estimated total number of subscribers was slightly less than they had forecasted. Also, John Foley published a letter to the Peloton team, which was also shared on the Peloton website. There, he addressed head on some of the recent news reports, which again, we'll cover up next in the show. First, he says Peloton has identified a leaker at the company and they plan to take appropriate legal action. Hmm. Foley also addressed the rumor of layoffs saying, and I quote, in the past, we've said layoffs would be the absolute last lever we would ever have to pull. However, we now need to reevaluate our organizational structure and size of our team with the utmost care and compassion. And we are still in the process of considering all options as part of our, of our efforts to make our business more flexible. John also pushed back on recent reports about production being paused, saying, rumors that we are halting all production of bikes and treads are false. Instead, he states that they are right-sizing their production and resetting production level. He wraps up the letter by giving a few positive stats, trying to ensure people that Peloton isn't going anywhere. He talks about their low 0.79% churn level and says Peloton had a record day recently with more than 2.9 million workouts being taken in one day. Of course, you can find the full letter on the Pillow Buddy website linked in the show notes. And with that, folks, it is time to get on with the show. Again, what you're about to hear was recorded just before this data and letter came out. So please do keep that in mind when listening to the show. All right, folks, it's been a tough week for Peloton, um, certainly in the news this week. Um, our top story for today is that it looks like Peloton have temporarily halted production of its new equipment from February to March. Um, the Tread Plus will not be produced at least until fiscal year 2023, so sometime next year. Um, and we saw a significant drop in the price of the stock uh, back on Thursday uh, by about 20%. I think it hit something like 20 I think it even got as low as 20, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so mm. it was 23. 23. It got as low as 23. Um, I've so, just stopped checking. You know, I just... Yeah, you know what? I did sell. I did sell quite a bit um, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and I just, I think I have, you know, I just have a small amount because I, I just wouldn't be right if I didn't. Um, so mm. I just kept a small amount and, you know, I took my losses and kind of just ran. But, um, but yeah, so that from, you know, on hearing the news, you know, in so much so that they actually halted, um, they actually halted, uh, you know, trading um, on it for, for, uh, you know, a short amount of time. Um, oh. Well, yeah, on Thursday, um, you know, but back in December, the demand, um, you know, had been reevaluated and expectations were significantly lowered already back then. Of course, we'd heard the first little bit back in October. And then in December, you know, as, as the demand was starting to decrease, um, they, um, they certainly were reevaluating what they 
going to do. Um, they also saw a lower than expected interest in the upcoming Peloton guide. Um, and now we're seeing that the guide has been delayed too, possibly until April. So that was supposed to be released last year, and now they've delayed that. Um, so certainly from that perspective, there is a lot going on. Um, the flip side of things, what they've done is that they've raised the price um, for the bike and tread in 2022. So in the U.S., the increase comes in the, fa in the fact that shipping and delivery will no longer be free, um, whereas in the U.K., Germany, and Australia, the base price is going to be increased, um, but delivery and setup will remain um, included. Um, so we're not 100% sure of the thought process behind that, um, whether it has to do with taxes or, you know, certain different aspects within a country. Um, but they did, um, you know, they did go ahead and have that up on their homepage banners. Um, so folks were, you know, were made aware that this was going to be happened. Um, after CNBC um, had acquired a recording of the internal um, meeting where Chief Marketing and Communications Officer Dara Tresido was quoted saying that, um, you know, folks were raising prices all over and that she wanted to see Peloton go to the middle of the pack. Um, Peloton then actually did provide CNBC with a quote regarding the price range, um, saying, like many other businesses, Peloton is being impacted by global economic and supply chain challenges that are affecting the majority, if not all, businesses worldwide. Even with these increases, we still we believe we still offer the best value in connected fitness and offer consumers various financing options that make Peloton accessible to a wide audience. Um, again, we have seen the U.S. Peloton homepage. Um, homepage banner with both the bike and the tread um, being updated that the delivery and setup value um, will end at the end of January. Um, and then again, of course, in UK, German and Australian sites, um, it explicitly states that the retail price is increasing. Um, so again, you know, it doesn't come, John, as a, as a complete surprise because um, John Foley had indicated um, during the December shareholder meeting that they were potentially looking um, at charging for delivery and set up. So, yeah. you know, I guess they have to figure out how they can increase, you know, their revenues somehow. Um, and I guess that's, you know, that's one way. So and the delivery setup fee, I mean... When we got our first bike in 2017, we paid that. It was no, it was the norm for the delivery okay. set fee to be an extra. So it wasn't. I don't know when they stopped charging, um, including delivery and setup fee. But back then, they basically justified it paying the delivery setup fee as that's how they they validate the warranty on the bike when they bring it in and set it, it up and make sure everything's working. Um, that's how they validate that one year warranty. But um, yeah, we weren't we weren't lucky to have the the no delivery fee back then, but I mean, that was kind of just, it is what it is, you know, yeah. back in 2017. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah, I, don't, yeah. I, I think that's, I think it's, you know, somewhat reasonable. It was, it was a nice perk to have that waived. Uh, but it's not like but you kind of felt like the, you were getting uh, a discount, overall. right? You know, you yeah. kind of felt like you were getting a discount. So it was like, Oh, okay. Delivery, you know, delivery and, and set up is free. Um, so that's, I guess, you know, going to be frustrating for new purchases. I, I wonder how that's going to impact sales. You know, I'm curious to see that. I don't know. I don't, I don't think it would be a deal breaker. It's not like Peloton's, you know, Amazon prime, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I don't yeah. think it's going to be a deal break. It's going to be, you know, irritating for some who didn't obviously take advantage of now they're, they're pony uh, having the to pay for it cost. Yeah. Uh, yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. All right. Well, you have some bad news too. <laughs> Well, yeah, and some other another negative Peloton news. So on uh, last Tuesday morning, CNBC began reporting uh, Peloton has hired McKinsey Consulting Group to review its cost structure and potentially eliminate some jobs. So according to the report by CNBC, uh, Peloton has been discussing potential job cuts on uh, recent company calls with their management team. Additionally, they're also examining... Um, around 15 of their 123 showroom locations for potential closure. Um, and this is directly from the CNBC uh, report. Uh, they state the potential job cuts were discussed, recent call members 
of the team, according to a recording obtained by CNBC. The apparel division, which has seen particularly weak sales, is one area that could be targeted. Uh, the company didn't, doesn't disclose revenue from its apparel business. Um, Peloton's also considering asking employees at its brick and mortar locations to take customer service calls during less busy times, according to the call. And at one point um, during the call, a Peloton executive said that 15 stores are on the cut line. Um, and right now, uh, as of uh, June 30th, they uh, operated 123 showrooms in the US, Canada, UK, and Germany. Um, Neither Peloton nor McKinsey replied to CNBC's request for comments on their report. Uh, but since that publishing, it appears that Business Insider has also acquired the same recording that CNBC did and are sharing some more details in a new report, which, um, which we had listed on our website. It's, it's, it's behind a paywall article, unfortunately, but um, we highlight, you know, we hit the major bullet points of it. Um, the recording indicates... Uh, Peloton has created a project fuel as the internal team looking into how to make the cuts. And on that call, Business Insider states uh, the team uh, discussed plans to lay off 41 percent of the sales and marketing wow. teams uh, with more minor cuts coming to the e-commerce and retail teams. Um, some of the cuts might be made through cutting people who had low performance reviews recently, uh, while others might be through removing redundancies. Uh, another topic discussed, they said, was whether the team should make less custom merchandise and go back to more co-branded partnerships with other companies, which I personally would like because I love a lot of the Lululemon uh, apparel. I don't, I don't know, think John. we'll be seeing any of the Lulu, the we'll Lulu stuff with the, the, the feuding, <laughs> but it would be nice. Um, yeah, all this yeah. news comes, um, you know, just days before, you know, Peloton had increased, uh, announced the increase in the uh, total cost of the bike and tread. Um, previously reported, Peloton had changed, um, as we had previously mentioned, and uh, as it was reported uh, in the news, Peloton had changed the pay and bonus structure of their showroom employees in, a, in an effort to cut costs. Uh, for some employees, these changes resulted in pay cuts of around 30 to 60 percent and how they're they're compensated. Uh, but yeah, it's, um, they're really taking a hard line and to really, you know, Guess, reduce yeah. a lot I mean, of that overhead. Um, and, yeah, and yeah. the showrooms, it's nice having the physical presence, but it's really just, it's so not necessary, so um, not especially, necessary. especially in malls where it's kind of like malls are so, so much like a thing of the past. Yeah. You know, so yeah. many malls are just dead. Um, you know, I, I haven't really heard of any malls that are really thriving. Um, you know, there's, there's some of the nice malls, like the, the, where I grew up in New Jersey, we had the short Hills mall, which is like the nice fancy mall. And that's, you know, the home of the original, the, the first Peloton showroom. But I mean, there's the, the rent has still got to be, uh, huge yeah. in some of those spaces. Um, especially in the ones where they like really sort of built out the showroom in more sort of, um you know, traditional brick and mortar where they're not actually in like a, an actual mall, you know, they're sort of out like on a street, you know, yeah, in a, yeah, a retail yeah. space. So, and, 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 and reading a lot of the comments when, when we reported this on Facebook and on Instagram, I, I mean, the overall opinion seemed to be, there's no shock to the, the, to the showrooms being closed. They just don't seem necessary, but you know, hundred percent human beings there that obviously are going to lose their jobs and be affected. So it's a whole ripple effect, you know, from the top down. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's got to, it's got to, there's no question. It's got to, you know, impact and, and have some negativity just in the vibe um, from everybody, which is sad, yeah. you know, which is really sad. I mean, I've never really developed a relationship with, um, you know, with, Certainly, the store showroom. in Beth yeah, the, the showroom out in Bethesda, um, in Maryland. Um, but I've gone into the one here in Florida and Aventura Mall, and I'll be honest with you. I mean, it's always empty. It's always empty. Mm. Every now and again, I may see somebody like going in or going out, but um, I, I, yeah, it's never, you know, I, and and it, 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 yes, for some people, maybe they want to see the physical hardware before they make you know, such a big purchase. Um, but I think for most people, it's just, it's become a word of mouth type of thing. So people were, you know, purchasing it just by, you know, 
you know, referral codes. Like, truthfully, yeah. give us more referral codes. And they've got codes. the 30-day, they've got the 30-day trial. Exactly. So there's no risk. Ex- um, the so if you logic, don't like it for whatever reason. A hundred percent. The logic behind decreasing, you know, referral codes and not, because we are the biggest advocates, right? I mean, the members are who's, you know, who's driving a lot of this. We talk about it on social. We share it with we our friends. I mean, apparel. I mean, yeah. you know, we wear the apparel. I mean, look at the memes you post. I mean, about, you know, how do you know <laughs> someone has a Peloton? You know, those type of I, things. I mean, I've I mean, gotten so many, yeah, referrals from, from my TikTok account, from all the, right. from all the right. Cody clips. You know, people want so to ju- you know, so jump on the bandwagon. And what's a hundred yeah. bucks? So the fact that they took away, you know, that they took away the um, you know, kind of family referrals on one subscription and then potentially seeing the reduction in, you know, the referral amounts we get. I haven't seen that happen yet, though. So I think we're still at 12. I know they were talking about reducing yeah. it to six. Um, I'm still showing 12 on able- mine. I have a name. If you can send me a link where you view it, I can't seem to find the normal page on the the browser where I normally go to look at my referrals, like the little refer oh. friends option. I can't find yeah? it now. It's it's it oh, dropped well, off a, a couple weeks ago. So no, so that so you maybe want to check with them then because maybe what they've done is. Yeah, it is still there because I, I mean, I control what I'm saying. So you maybe want to check with them, John, in that um, mm. maybe they're just looking at Jackie's and not, you know, because it's one household and they're not realizing that you've got two subs- two subscriptions. I mean, that's something that I would. Uh, okay. Because because it dropped off marks. So, you know, I had gone on marks at the end of last year, even as, as early as last year to because I had used up all my referral codes. He had no longer had it, but it's because I was the primary, you know, I was the primary member. So definitely double check that and make sure that okay. they haven't gypped you, they haven't gypped you off your, uh, off your referral codes because you both have yeah, subscriptions. Yeah, I definitely, definitely got a, a couple of referrals, but I have yet to get emails from, so definitely from, like, from my check. code that I've given. So, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So definitely, yeah, definitely. So folks, yeah, if you, if you're seeing the same thing, make sure that, you know, you, if you are the primary member that you, are still getting that. A few people actually reached out to me as well. Um, a girl that follows me from North Carolina said, "Oh, mine's gone." And I said, "Well, does your husband is it under your husband's name?" And she goes, "Yeah." And I said, "Well, you know, that's why." Um, but with you guys, you know, you have uh, two subscriptions. Yeah, because so we definitely, definitely we pay yeah two monthly two fees, fees. So we should exactly have two, our two codes should still be good because I made that call a while back to make sure we had two separate account holders, one for Jackie yeah. and one for me. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. Hopefully. So, Hopefully I haven't Definitely. missed out on some new referrals for 22. <laughs> yeah, they're quite good, though, about um, about going back and giving it to you. So I would definitely reach yeah, out to them. Yeah, retroactively. Yeah, mm-hmm, I'm, not, I'm mm-hmm. not too concerned. Definitely. Um, well, some more disappointing news. Um, it had been announced at the beginning of, um, of the week that Peloton would be um, removed from the NASDAQ 100 index, um, you know, after a tough year on the stock exchange um, that we, you know, said we saw the, sh- the shares drop down. And when I first, you know, started reporting this and, and was working on, on the notes, um, it was before the Thursday information had come out. And, um, mm. you know, back then it, it had dropped down, you know, to 80 um, percent. So it's interesting, though, because remember that it was only just a year ago that they were added um, so within a year, yeah. it was so significantly decreased that they've had to, you know, that they've had to um, uh, drop it. You know, as we all know, Peloton first went public back in September of 2019. And, um, you know, we saw the stock price soar during the unprecedented demand created by COVID-19 and the pandemic um, with the stock hitting. And it's it's almost unfathomable to think that it, that it went from, I think it was the IPO was released at, and correct me if I'm wrong, control room, $29. I think that's what we saw it. Yeah, $29, I'm getting a yes. Um, it yeah. went up as high as a dollar, uh, 166. Around? No, 166, oh, 166. 166. Yep, 166.50. It was right around uh, 121 back- 130 for a while. It did. And then it, it dropped and it like steady. soared. Right. It soared. Yeah. Um, and then of course, you know, since then we just saw that stock, you know, that stock price absolutely pl- plummeting. I mean, I think part of the reason what we're seeing is back in November when the quarter one 
2022 earnings call, um, you know, was 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 had, um, and they had lowered yeah. their full year forecast. Um, that was when we saw that initial, you know plummet of the stock dropping, you know, 30% literally overnight. I mean, literally overnight. And then of course, you know, it was followed by the company-wide hiring freeze. Um, and now the stock, um, I mean, to our Thursday, it, as we said at the beginning of, of the show, and I mean, it dropped down to $23. So, um, Really, you know, really, really curious to see what um, what's going to happen. I mean, that's under the um, initial public offering, uh, you know, of the twenty nine dollars. So um, yeah, we'll keep reporting. We'll keep sharing with you. But um, it's disappointing and it's sad. Well, I'm still. Um, I'm not selling. I, I I got in around eighteen. Yeah. So <laughs> okay. I'm not at a loss. Oh, really? I've never been at a loss. Yeah. Okay, that's because awesome. I waited. I waited just a few months after the IP because I looked at the IPO and I thought uh, that, that price is a bit rich for, yeah. for the valuation for starting out. So I just. I just waited. I put in, you know, a buy limit order, you know, to, to buy it if it drops to a certain price and, you know, it hit a few months later. So. And you got it. Yeah. That's it awesome. would have been nice. It would have been nice, but then I don't feel like a, it, it's a weird feeling if I get out of the stock. I don't know how, I don't feel, I, oh, I still I want to be the an same owner, way. you know? Me yeah. too. Me too. I feel exactly the psychologically a hundred percent. But You're I right. also didn't, You're right. I also didn't really go go into buying Peloton stock to make a quick buck, you know, right. to, to turn it over. So I'm in for the long run. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be right there with you. <laughs> yeah. So in other news, pivot, let's pivot to more exciting stuff. Now, uh, the David Bowie <laughs> artist series went down as we had, um, you know, predicted last week with all the different signs and indicators that were out there. Um, it happened. Uh, there was a special badge, which I uh, I got on Leanne's cool down, her David Bowie cool down ride. Wasn't it did. so it's cool? A, it's a cool little yeah. badge. Yeah, with a little, I like the little lightning. I like how they're incorporating the lightning bolt into a lot of different graphics and images. It's kind of cool. Um, but they, Peloton, they had a, a blog post. You, we linked to it on the Pelo Buddy website, um, talking all about the artist series. Uh, but unlike some uh, other artist series, all of the classes will be featured as a collection on the app, uh, Bike and Tread. Uh, they're all available now. They've, they've all happened at this point. Um, there was a, a German yoga class with Nico. There was a, an upper body strength with Ben that was 10 minutes. Um, also a stretch with Ben as well. There was a, a ride with Cliff, German instructor Cliff. Uh, a walk plus run with Susie Chan that was 30 minutes. Uh, yoga with Dennis. Um, like I said, the cool down ride with Leanne, and there was also a 30 minute Bowie Peloton run with Selena, which is funny because in the some of the commercials they were showing a fake boot camp, David Bowie boot camp with Selena. So it was interesting that it, she never actually did one; she just did a run. Oh, that um, is interesting. But that yeah. was on there. Yeah, and then there was a 30 minute ride with Jess King, which I'm sure was was extra because it's jess so i'm sure they yeah. had a really funky light a lighting package and a whole production uh for that one which i have not taken yet um and on top of that there were three exclusive brand new remixes that were featured in some of these classes um from artists honey dijon saint vincent and toki monsta and and what i oh, had they were heard all in yeah, they stretch were all they, they did they bench stretch. stretch. In fact, it's it is it is actually one of my picks of the week. But they were they're members. Um, they're members. Oh, so okay. They're all Peloton members. Yeah, he mentioned that in the stretch. I thought that was so cool. It's it's funny. The other day, um, when I was still on the bike, Jackie had done a hike or a run on the tread, and I saw her doing the stretch, the David Bowie stretch with Ben on the tread on the you know on the floor by me. And afterward, and um, there's different opinions on this, so you can go either All way, right. but she hated it. She hated, she really? hated, I said, what, what, what didn't you like about it? She was like, it was just really weird. And then I looked at the playlist and I saw basically there was three re remixes and only just one original song at the very end. And, and for me, this is just a personal opinion. If I'm like going to do an artist series, I want to hear the song as it's that's originally intended by the art. Like, I don't want to hear some remix version. Like that's fine in a non-artist 
in a special, yeah, I hear you. a serious I hear class. You. I mean, I think for um, me, I like I'm not a remixes. huge, yeah, for me, you know, I'm not a huge David Bowie fan. I mean, I, I like the music. For me, it was more about Ben. I and I've been, you know, I have done his 007 stretch. I've done his um, what was I just doing recently? Yeah. I've done it like a hundred times. Um, I just like his ten minute stretches. I love the structure that he does in the stretches. So um, the music was actually, I actually enjoyed it just because I'm. I don't really know Bowie's music that well that it was okay for me. You know, I wasn't hearing something. I was just mm-hmm. fine. It was just fun. It was just a nice way to do it. So it's interesting how, yeah, yeah. different perspectives. Um, you know, it is interesting to see different perspectives from from different folks. But yeah, that is funny. It's almost like um, um, Jen Sherman has a, a series called Cover to Cover, yes. and it's it's probably it's probably one of my least favorite. I mean, she she always plays great music, but it's probably my least favorite series because when she plays a cover of the song, it just has me wanting wanting me to hear the original. Yeah, but you're a big mu- covers- but you're a big music buff. So for somebody that like knows their music and appreciates it, I think that is that does make a big difference. I think you're hundred percent right. Yeah. Whereas you know, with me, if if I I listen to the music just to enjoy it, and it doesn't mean I mean I never remember the words. I'm just not, it's just not who I am. In fact, my kids, it's something my kids have brought up to us recently. I mean, my, the older two especially, they always said, you know, you and dad never like played music for us. You never really introduced us. And the two of them are huge music, you know, uh, buffs now. Um, I mean, oh my God, Kayla is any, any concert she can go to and different genres and knows her stuff and knows the artists. Um, so it's interesting, but for us, it was mm. Mark and I it just never was something that it was there, you know, it played in the background and, and that's why maybe I do love kind of the eighties. Cause I think about back, you know, that was my, my, you know, yeah. adult, memories. adulthood, my memories come back. Um, but other than that, it's never been like, you know, a big, a big thing for me. I mean, I love certain artists, but it's never been like a big thing. So I think that does make a big difference. I think it does make a big difference. Yeah. Yeah. If it um, motivates yeah. you in the workout, that's all that matters. And I'm right, sure people right? love remixes and, and I, I do too, but I would just rather hear the original version i i would want to hear since since we really haven't had any bowie on the platform until now i would want to just hear the in the artist series at least you know the original version which i guess it was just this one 10 minute it was just in the in the in the stretch i'm not complaining much but correct yeah but i i just thought it was interesting that jackie was you know she she's so opinionated on (laughs) you know little little quirks and instructor quirks so i mean she wouldn't she wouldn't ride with jen sherman for a while because she thought um, she didn't like the way she said her T's and her S's. <laughs> it's just like little, oh, Jackie, little get random a, things. Oh, Jackie, get a life. <laughs> and I, and I, even, I, even, I even called her out when she first met Jen, um, you know, a while back at the studio. I gave her a hard yeah. time in front of Jen. She, she, she laughed about it. That's uh, too but, funny. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> That's too funny. Well, anyway. changing gears completely. Um, changing gears completely. We actually did see a new Breathe and Speak Up series um, being launched in honor of Martin Luther King Day. Um, and that was with Chelsea Jackson Roberts and Tunde. Um, Tunde did a Speak Up ride on Monday. It was uh, 10 a.m. Eastern. Um, Chelsea did a Breathe In, Speak Up Slow Flow at 12 p.m and a breathe in, speak up meditation at 12.45 p.m. Eastern time. And that was on Martin Luther King Day on Monday. Um, I just jumped on the meditation. Um, and she's she's so lovely. She is just, I mean, Chelsea Jackson Robin, Roberts is, is truly um, such a lady. And I love the way she, I, it was interesting though, because I actually didn't love her when she first came on the platform. I just found her voice not soothing. And I guess now that I've really gotten into my meditation, um, I've, I've learned to appreciate her so much more. Um, and it was beautiful. Her meditation was, was absolutely beautiful. Um, so yeah. Nice. Well, in other news, so Jen Sherman, she had been off the platform for a while and a lot of folks were speculating, you know, was she under the weather? Um, she's sick and she, uh, came on, she returned, um, to social media finally and posted, um, uh, last Tuesday afternoon in her Instagram story that uh, she had had COVID-19, um, but was feeling good. She said she had emerged from her COVID cave and she's out for the first time. Um, and she was back on the bike on Thursday evening for a 30 minute intervals and arms ride. 
Um, but she just said, um, you know, have you missed me? Because I've missed you terribly. Thank you for all the well wishes. She said she's doing fine. She said she's just got a little sniffle here and there. No big deal. Um, but she said she was looking forward to being back on the bike. And also, um, on the schedule when she was, it was ultimately canceled last week, a week ago, she was supposed to have the first of her uh, football pregame ride, her 60 minute signature football pregame rides, which, um, the first of happened, uh, this past Sunday. And, um, she made an announcement, um, I think on Wednesday on Instagram, it was actually kind of random. She posted at like 1 AM late Wednesday night. Cause I, I saw the notification pop, like I was about to go to sleep and I was like, this is just it's the most random time to, to post this, but, uh, she's kind of a night owl. So it doesn't surprise yeah. me because she's, she's looking at stories on Instagram late, late at night. Um, but she's very excited to bring back her signature football program. So I assume it, it, um, I haven't seen how many weeks it'll run, but I would imagine it would run up until Super Bowl Sunday, um, awesome. you know, with the playoffs, NFL playoffs, but, um, there's, if you've never done a 60 minute football pregame ride, they're super fun. They're challenging. It's definitely one of her harder workouts, uh, ride series. And she treats it like, you know, a four quarter football game, um, you know, where you've got the, the halftime, you know, to sort of, uh, reset. And then, you know, the third quarter, fourth quarter, she tr- kind of, tr- you know, breaks it up into sections that way. So it's kind of fun and it's all kind of music that you would hear if you were at a football game at the football stadium. So go think. Definitely think little um, black and yellow, uh, probably some Lil Wayne in there. Um, sometimes she plays rock and roll, like Gary Glitter's rock and roll part two. Uh, but definitely like, you know, the, the jock type um, pump you up music, you know, you, you would hear at sporting events, not yeah, just football yeah. necessarily. Uh, but I'm excited. Um, and I know yeah. a lot of people love that series. And, she, you know, she's been very, she's always very quiet when you ask if, you know, some uh, series is coming back as they, they usually can't reveal ahead of time. Um, but I was hoping, and I kind of figured it would be back as bright as we're in the thick of the, the NFL playoffs right now. Get it, getting into the playoffs. Exactly. Yeah. yeah that's awesome. Uh, but I mean, she was off, she was off for a while. Her last live ride was on Sunday, January 9th. Um, she did have two oh, wow. pre-recorded on demand drops that had, um, gone onto the platform when she was off the schedule. Um, But yeah, she's been kind of absent for a while and everyone was, you know, everyone was kind of wondering what was going on. I I kind of figured it was COVID related because when they don't come on and say, you know, some, some instructors will say, I'm not feeling well. I'm sorry. I've, you know, I've had to cancel class. Olivia's done that in her Instagram stories or, you know, they'll say they've got an injury. Uh, But, but when she didn't actually come on and say anything and she was completely you know, quiet Gone. on social. AWOL. Kind of AWOL. Figured, yeah. You, you kind of figure AWOL. You kind of figured it's it's COVID related. And usually they they come out and say after the fact, after, you know, they've recovered or they're on the tail end of it, like Cody did. Yeah. Yeah. Truthfully, I'm actually surprised with as rampant as it is. And I mean, literally I hear about somebody every day. Um, I'm surprised there haven't been more instructors, you know, especially if she had yeah, it and she's been in the studio in the and it's so area. contagious. Yeah. Exactly. And it's so contagious. So interesting. I was, yeah, when I heard that it was that, that she in fact did acknowledge that she had it, I was curious to see if there's going to be anybody else pop up and say that they had it too. So that's definitely, um, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Um, I think that makes, she, she makes the third, the third instructor. I think it's just been Cody and Chelsea. Jackson Roberts, and and which is surprising. That, um, very, those are very surprising. Impressive numbers considering, yeah, there's so many instructors now. So. Yeah. And that have confirmed, oh, exactly, confirmed, that, have, that have actually yeah, confirmed right. that they've had it. Yeah. And none out of the UK, yeah. which I'm also surprised about because they're like dropping like flies in the UK too. And they're about to like lift up, mm. you know, lift all their restrictions and everything. Look, I think it's just a way of life now and it's going to be like having the flu. Um, you know, I think that's just what's going to, you know, what's going to happen. And hopefully those that are vaccinated yeah. are going to be okay and, and kind of move on. 
So um, talking about series, though, uh, we do have confirmation that Alex um, Alex Toussaint is going to be bringing back his ride to greatness, John. Um, and maybe this year I'll get to join you because last year <laughs> I did not do it. Um, Alex had actually spilled the beans and confirmed in a pre-show um, on his Wednesday night ride that he would be bringing it back. Um, and then he actually teased it in a tweet uh, with the hashtag RTG coming back um, on Twitter. Um, but on Thursday, this past Thursday, Peloton did confirm um, uh, in the output that, in fact, season two was going to be back. Um, there will once again be two teams, Team Activate and Team Validate, which members can select and add the hashtag um, onto their you know, onto their leaderboard so that you can follow along. Um, it's scheduled in with the preseason on January the 27th and will be a 10-minute practice week. Um, a pra- you know, practice. And then week one starts January the 31st with a 30-minute practice. And February 3rd will be game day. Very, very interesting, John. Classes, so I don't know if you guys remember, last year they did them on Saturdays. Um, it was kind of in yeah. the middle of the day on Saturday. Saturday. It was 12 noon. Yeah, Saturday afternoon. Seemed to be yeah. a, an awesome time. West Coast, East Coast, international. This time, he is doing them on Thursday evenings at 6.30 p.m. um, Eastern Mm. time. So I think that that's kind of strange because, um, you know, it's certainly rather late in the evening for the UK and German folks to um, to get on. And it's early for the West Coast. If people are working, you know, that's going to be 3.30 in the afternoon. So I'm um, yeah, very a- interested to see what the logic was behind them changing the times um, because it really does seem to be that just the East Coast of the states in Canada are going to really be able to join in. Yeah, so any thoughts that, that, you, that, that you have? Yeah. They're probably just, just changing it up. Just, you know, just... yeah. For a lot I'm of sure folks, there's going to be, I, you know, I, I haven't heard any rumble yet because it was just released on Thursday, but I'm sure there are going to be people um, that are going to be bummed that it's that it, they've done it because there were there was a lot of, um, you know, traction last year when they did it. I mean, people really got into yeah. it. So um, and obviously, yeah, there's and there's greater numbers on the weekend, especially on Saturday. So I would think that would drive numbers much higher overall on Saturday compared to a Thursday night. But I mean, aside from Saturday, his normal Saturday afternoon club bangers time slot, he normally teaches during the week at night. So Saturdays are really the only time I get. And he was teaching Wednesday mornings. He would go every other week and he hasn't really in a while. He he had this Hmm. Wednesday morning, 730 a.m. time slot. And he's, I don't know what happened with that, but he was saying that like every other Wednesday, he would have that time slot for a while, but then it just kind of somebody else took that over. But um, very interesting. I, I probably won't. I, I'm probably not going to be too inclined to to do it with you know. I just I never work out in, in the evening and yeah, yeah. No, it's like I mean, right smack dab sure. in the middle of dinner and family dinner. time. Like Jackie would give yeah. Jackie would give me so much side eye if I told her I was doing. Uh, doing like she it. wouldn't on one Saturday. The last time, the first time around with Ride to Greatness, like she wouldn't even let me do one Saturday when it was, I think it was like Jackson's birthday or some party. I remember. Uh, I remember yeah, it was she Jackson's gave me a hard birthday. Time. And, and Team Activate, which I was on, that was the team I was repping. We lost that day. They, they needed uh, you. By see? a really close all, margin. It was all and because And overall, you Team went Activate there. lost. Yeah, right. <laughs> And overall, Team Activate <laughs> lost that first series. I think, you know, we lost three to one. So it wasn't even yeah. super close. Yeah. Validate had, a, you know, they had some heavy hitters on there. They were all, they're all jacked bikes. Jacked bikes. <laughs> that's it. That's jacked it. Bikes. Exactly. That's, that's why they won. Easy bikes. Crazy. Um, but Crazy. yeah, it's, it's a bummer. And um, I don't know if you were going to mention, but there's also apparel. There is. The, sorry. The apparel, I, yep. I, that yep the apparel that is going to come out as well. Again you know, seems futile. I mean, it's just because of the timing. I just can't see people jumping on to to purchase stuff, um, you know, at, at being the time that they're having it, not having enough people being able to be on it. I'm very curious to see how that goes down. Some, some interesting well, decisions are being made up at HQ at the moment, I would say. 
Well, I do know that the first time around when they released the the tank top uh, unisex Rider Greatness jersey, um, they flew off. They sold out super quick. So I'm sure right. there will be plenty of members that I'll be wanting to scoop. And I do like Team Activate. We have the red. And I, I much okay. prefer the relo, the Pelo red to the, to the, I just don't look black. good wearing, you know, black, all black. black. Uh, yeah. But those are the options, yeah. the red and black uh you know, game Jersey. So check those out on the, uh, the boutique before they, All before right. they're gone. I mean, they might already be gone by the time this episode airs. So yeah. All right. When I get to see. Yeah. Well, in uh, other music news, um, the AFO, the all for one music festival, we've gotten strong indication from a recent Forbes article that it will be returning. Um, the article's titled Taylor, Bowie, and Beyond, How Peloton Will Continue Taking Stock of Its Music Empire. Um, it talks all uh, about all things music with Peloton's senior VP of music, Gwen Bethel Riley. Um, she talked all about how artists now see uh, Peloton as part of their digital strategy. So if they're thinking of dropping a new album, um, just like Taylor Swift did with her, you know, her Taylor, her Taylor's version of um, each song from her album Red, um, Peloton can step in there and be a part of their their digital strategy. So, um, you know, back in July, Peloton solidified their rock star status. The article says with their first of kind three day all for one music festival, which had twenty five artists, um, including Doja Cat, Imagine Dragons, Migos, Nas, Pearl Jam. Uh, Tina Turner, Gwen Stefani, to name um, you know some some big notable ones, um, and all forty of its instructors uh, were were involved. Uh, but the article does state, "Rest assured, there will be another." Um, so I don't know if it, the timing is going to be f- uh, summertime again. It would seem yeah. more like a summer. You know, it's it seems like a summer. Fun thing. You know, music festivals yeah. all happen in the summer for the most part. So I think sometime summer twenty twenty two. Um, it would go down, but I know that was a lot of fun with just it was know, a lot of so fun. much different music, you know, highlighted and yeah. showcased. So yeah, it was definitely a ton of fun. And then lastly, um, in the new Peloton's quarter two 2020 earnings goal date has been announced. Um, that will be an interesting one for sure. February the eighth yeah. um, at five p.m. East Coast time. Um, if you are interested in joining, and certainly if you um, I like John and I and still have our skin in the teeth, our, our skin, skin in the game, in the game. <laughs> skin in the game, <laughs> in the teeth, um, <laughs> skin in the teeth, our skin in the game. Um, you can, you can head over to pedalbuddy.com. Um, Chris Lewis does have the dial in and webcast information um, on the website. So that is going to be a very interesting call, I think to get to hear what they are mm. going to talk about um, as far as upcoming in quarter two. So, um, yeah. And then I guess right. um, next up, John, is the some, instructor some in the news. Yeah. So it All looks right. what like, do, what, um, do what do we got? So Emma Lovewell got a cool spot on live with Kelly and Ryan on Wednesday. I don't know if you got a chance to watch it, but I certainly did. So that was back on January the 19th. And um, the segment was called A New You in 2022. Um, and it featured Emma's Crush Your Core, say, um, you know, Crush Your, Crush Your Core program. Um, the segment was done virtually. So I don't know if you guys remember, but when Jen was on she was in fact in studio with them um yeah if i'm not mistaken right jess and they kind sims. of kept their she distance was. and jess sims yeah yeah so this was yeah, all they were, virtual they were spread out. In fact, so virtual that Kelly and Ryan were actually in their own homes as well. So you had Kelly in her home, you had Ryan in his, and then you had Emma um, in hers. Um, So it was interesting to see it being filmed that way. Um, Ryan had asked Emma, which I thought was kind of cute, how hard it was to try and host and work out at the same time. So, um, you know, how to basically do a class and work out at the same time. And her response was, it's part of the job and I've been training for it Um, because we do sometimes wonder, right? How they are able to communicate with us for a, you know, 10, 15, 20, 30, 60 minute class and continue to have breath and be able to do it (laughs) where most of us are are like dying at the end of it. Um, You know, but we all know certainly that the, 
instructors are pretty phenomenal, um, you know, how they are able to teach classes and um, do a pretty intense workout. Um, Emma shared um, how she has her four-week Crush Your Core program, and she showed the hosts her moves. So she had them all down on yoga mats, and um, it was definitely <laughs> quite amusing seeing Ryan Seacrest in a suit and trainers um, doing yeah. his crushing uh, crushing his core um kelly was obviously brilliant um you know clearly she does a ton of yoga but she was so flexible and did everything that emma said easily and with no issues ryan um ryan was pretty funny to watch him um you know in his in his suit. struggle yeah, um, i'm sure and, and for you pelo pet and you for you pelo pet fans um kimchi made an appearance um they we saw we got to see emma's cat kimchi kind of do do a little appearance in there and of course kelly's pets um were definitely in the way and emma, emma kept on saying can you make sure that the, you know the dog's behind you <laughs> um so it was it was quite cute and then Lastly, which I thought was very funny, was Ryan actually acknowledged how the instructors have become celebrities. Um, and he had shared that uh, one of the producers, um, B-Rob on American Idol, wanted Ryan to make sure that he said to Emma, hello. So um, she kind of <laughs> chuckled sheepishly when he said that. Um, because, you know, I, I don't think they really think of themselves as celebrities. She was like, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, which I thought was kind of cute. So, yeah, it was like a seven and a half minute segment. So it was pretty intense. And she did quite a few, um, quite a few moves, you know, quite a few exercises in that, in, that time, in that time period. But it was fun to see her and fun to see them work out with her. Yeah, I, th I thought it was was going to be in the studio. So I was a little bummed when I saw in Emma's Instagram stories, you yeah. know, behind the scenes getting set up. And I, I thought it was funny. She had all these little taped cue cards kind of underneath the the camera or the ring light, you know, so she could look over and see, uh, interesting. Um, you know, read off her notes for, you know, the yeah. various positions that they went through. Um, and funny. I think I, I figured her little kitten, her new... Um, new addition to her family is it Rody? i figured yeah. that the kitten would would make an appearance in there which probably he was probably walking around in the background it was somewhere well, you know with kimchi. yeah 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 well uh in other instructor news tune day was interviewed recently for shape um the article is titled peloton's tune day oyanen shares how she grew to become the confident queen she is today um, Tunde says confidence is a skill, not a trait. Um, she learns her tricks to find her sparkle, even on the gloomiest of days. Um, Tunde, who initially joined Smile Direct Clubs, uh, Smile Direct Club as a, uh, a, a part of their newly launched Confidence Council, um, she talked about how she was very self conscious of her of her teeth, her smile. She um, mm. had a large gap in her teeth. And she even said, you know, when she would laugh, um, she would kind of cover her mouth because she didn't, you know, want anyone looking at her or her gap or, you know, making fun of her. Um, and then she eventually, you know, um, you know, grew her confidence. She got her, you know, her teeth, you know, straightened and Craig, I'm sure she had braces, um, as a kid. But what I also thought was, it, um, was interesting was her story about auditioning with Peloton because um, she initially didn't get the job. Um, she states her first audition Ooh. with Peloton, um, she botched it. And then she, she says how devastated she was. Um, she returned to LA to teach spinning at a you know, boutique um, spinning studio. And then a year later, she came back, re-auditioned, crushed it, and landed the job. Um, so I just thought that was a great wow. story. Wow! Um, yeah, I didn't know that. Heard, yeah, I've never heard of a Peloton instructor, you know, you know, blowing their first audition and then getting another opportunity um, to come back and and that land is it. So, wild. You know, great for her. That is so wild. She, you know, yeah. she said, um, you know, she probably didn't have the full confidence that she did um, from that second audition in the first time. So she basically, you know, she said she honed her skills in that year when she was teaching spin in LA and came back and, you know, and she blew them away. Um, so I thought hmm. that was a great story of, you know. Awesome. She's been, she's not, got a ton uh, of airtime too lately. She's got a ton of airtime. And we spoke about her last week on the show being in a couple of things as well. So she's definitely, yeah, the um, yeah. 
yeah, yeah, she's definitely um, out there. Well, Robin announced on, on Instagram, um, John, with a very cute little co-host, Baby Athena, that um, her new book, Strong Mama, hit the New York Times bestseller list. Um, and she went on just to thank everybody who's gone out and bought the book, um, as well as those that were involved in the creation and distribution of the book. So um, pretty awesome in that short period of time that it has already hit the New York um, Times bestseller list. So good for you, Robin. That's awesome. Yeah, good awesome, for her. Awesome. Yeah. Well, Adrian, uh, Adrian Williams, Tread and Strength Instructor, he was interviewed for People. Um, this this article is titled Peloton Instructor Adrian Williams Meditates Lying Down in the Shower. The sound of the water <laughs> steadies the mind. Um, it says uh, Williams, 30, 38. I didn't know he was 38. Uh, he's a fan oh, wow. of both yoga and meditation, and he incorporates this uh, regularly in his routine. He says, mindfulness is a big thing for me. His favorite place to meditate is in the shower, horizontally. <laughs> he says, I lie down completely. I do a five-minute guided meditation, and then I get up and scrub. He says, it's one of the most calming, calming things you can do because you're so focused. The shower, the sound of the water uh, steadies your mind. So I've never even thought about, I mean, I definitely get lost. You know, I definitely am one of the, the people in the Jackson by far takes the prize for wasting the most water in our family, <laughs> especially in the shower or in the bathtub. Uh, but I definitely get lost, you know, I play uh -oh. some music and I, I sort of get lost in the moment sometimes in the shower, especially on super cold days when, you know, I enjoy that hot water. You know, after yeah. how many workouts I've done that day, because I only shower yeah. once at the very end of the day. But uh, yeah, interesting. Um, I'm well, definitely yeah. trying to get into more. Yeah, meditation. That that good. We'll, we'll circle back to that with the picks. The picks of the week. But um, good, good. <laughs> I, I thought it was funny. A lot, of, hear. a lot of the comments when we posted that article about Adrian were like, "How big is his shower?" Because <laughs> he's not a small guy. <laughs> Exactly. So how does he fit? How does exactly. he lay down? He must have Especially one of those big York. fancy, like, yeah, he must have one of those big fancy showers with like the double shower head, you know, for the ceiling. I can only imagine. Yeah. That's yeah. too funny. So, that's too funny. Well, good must, for he him. He must have the space there. Good for him. And then um, former German Peloton bike instructor announced on IG that her new baby um, boy Sam arrived into the world safe and sound. Irene shared an absolutely gorgeous pic of holding Sam with her partner. Um, and yeah, we were just talking about it recently that this baby seemed to have been in gestation for a very long time. <laughs> so we were excited yeah. to see, um, Irene announced that he had arrived safely and she seemed to be completely, um, in awe with her little baby, Sam. Um, and of course we here at Pelo Buddy wish her so much joy and happiness and hopefully not too many sleepless nights. <laughs> It's going to be uh, yeah, good luck. a different, good different luck. exactly, yeah. right? Exactly. I do not miss those days. That's for sure. Um, and in other uh, birthday news, happy birthday to German cycle instructor Cliff Dwanger. He celebrated yeah. her birthday yeah. this past week. Happy birthday. Well, next up is Picks of the Week. <laughs> Why don't you take it away? Because um, I know I it's need your mile to take speed. Need to take it away, John. Absolutely. Right. So, um, yep. Um, I think it would be uh, certainly odd if I didn't include my celebrated milestone workouts as my picks of the week um, for you guys. So um, here goes. Um, first up is Leanne's 30-minute 80s ride. Wow, wow, wow. I don't think, I didn't, you know, honestly, John, I didn't think that her rides could get any better. Um, but I have to tell you that this one was, was epic. Um, I mean, she literally had, here we go, banger after banger. I mean, hitting it off with Cher, um, you know, and, and who doesn't love an 80s, you know, an 80s ride with, with a Cher track in there, right? Um, so she hit it off with Cher and I found someone to Belinda Carlisle's Heaven is a Place on Earth, Inner City's Good Life, Irene Cara's Flash Dance, What a Feeling, 
Tears for fears. Oh my God. I loved hearing everybody wants to rule the world. Um, she yeah, had she princes when doves wave. cry. Yep. Didn't she? But I loved it. She did. She had princes when doves cry. Elton John, I'm still standing. And she ended it off with one of my favorites, Phil Collins, Collins's groovy kind of love. I mean, mm. come on. <laughs> it was definitely <laughs> a come on moment. Um, <clears throat> You know, John, for me, I know that the you know that the adrenaline was pumping. Uh, you know, being my two thousandth ride. Um, but I have to say, when I saw my numbers go up um, with the incredible music that she had, and that I was kind of teetering on a PR, I definitely pushed myself getting three over my last PR. So um, proud, I think, would be an understatement. Um, but I have to tell you that eighties ride was by far one of my most favorite rides. And I did, I bookmarked it. And I think that I will do it over and over again because it was just, the music was amazing. And that's what I was trying to say to you earlier. It's like for me, it's kind of, I don't have to like, it doesn't have to be perfect music, but it's just music that I can relate to, have fun with and get lost in. So, um, you know, yeah. I, I really, I really, Makes really Makes you forget you're it. working out. It really did. I mean, it re I couldn't get over that I was PRing. I really couldn't get over it because I really haven't been very close to it. In fact, my last PR was on my um, was on my um, eighteen hundredth with her, and I had one. I had my friend Chrissy P um, kind of uh, shadow me and push me through the ride. Um, on this one, uh -huh. you know, I didn't. I, you know, I was just kind of riding, and and it was great. It was great to see. So I was really happy that I got over three hundred, and that I got you know a cool PR. Um, and then I do have a second bike pick of the week, uh, and it has to be Bradley Rose's thirty minute Broadway ride. Um, you know, I'm not sure if you guys remember, but he actually was scheduled to do a Broadway ride back last year, and. It just didn't happen. And I had messaged him and said, hey, I was, you know, I was all ready. And it just kind of went was to an encore jagged, ride. Was that the jagged little pill? Um, no, it was a Broadway that? ride. No, no, it was, it oh. was a, it was a okay. completely independent Broadway ride. And literally he posted about it on his social the night before. Um, and then that next day it was gone and they had, he had taken off what he had posted. And I did reach out to him and said, Hey, what oh. the hell happened? And he's like, ah, there was a glitch. Don't worry. It's still coming. And you know, they don't give too much information. Um, but yeah. this time he did go ahead, um, and hype it back up on social media again. Um, and I have to tell you, John, for me, I could not have hoped for um, anything better. Um, no, there was no Phantom of the Opera. I don't think they have the rights to it. I'm only assuming because I, I went back to look uh, and I don't believe they've ever played any Phantom of the Opera in um, in any of these rides. Um, but he did play, he did play um, two songs from Hamilton, um, from Hairspray, Dear Evan Hansen. And then one of my absolutely most favorite Broadway shows is Moulin Rouge and he played the El Tango de Roxanne um, and he did it justice. I mean, it, it absolutely flew by and it was phenomenal. So um, did those are my two play the version from, Mo sorry to cut you off, from Moulin no, Rouge, okay. did he play the version from the movie soundtrack or from the Broadway or from London cast recording? I don't believe I... Um, no, I think it was from the Broadway show. I think it was from the Broadway show. Okay. Yeah, no, I think I mean, it was from the Broadway sense, show. But, but it was, um, oh, it's amazing. I don't know if you've seen Moulin Rouge, but it is, I've seen it twice. And just it the is movie. one of my favorite. No, I've seen, okay. Yeah, no, no. The Broadway show, um, oh my God, amazing, amazing. Um, and then on the tread, um, John Huskett's 30 minute 2010s walk, um, also from Tuesday. Um, and his playlist, John was fire. I mean, it was amazing. From Pharrell Williams, brand new, to Sears, um, Elastic Heart with The Weekend and Diplo, to Avicii's Addicted to You. Um, and as I said at the beginning of the show, I did have to smile because he had reached out to ask me what I wanted uh, for my milestone. And I did request Usher's DJ Got Us Falling in Love. And um, it was no question the cherry on the cake. Um, interestingly enough, this was actually John's first 30 minute walk um, on the platform. So he um, I know has I've done never a 20 done minute a, walk with him. Yeah, he's got a, he's got a few yeah. 20 minute walks. He'd never done a 30 minute walk. Um, so he said, you know, you guys have me for an extra 10 minutes today. Um, and he was hopping. I mean, he is a funny guy. 
I, I, I'll tell you something, and, and I've noticed this in his ones as well, why I think I really like him, is he definitely mm-hmm. appeals to the beginner. Um, he, there's no, you know, Susie is intense. Her runs are intense. I find them extremely hard. Um, John mm-hmm. definitely appeals to the beginner on the tread. So for those of you folks that are just st- starting out on the tread, um, I mean, I did just this past week again, I did um, a 20 minute um, pop run that he had. Um, and I love the fact that he acknowledges that it's not a full out run. And for me, I, I'm not at that stage yet. I can't run for the full, you know, 20 or 30 minutes. I do need a little bit of downtime. Um, and yeah. he he definitely does that. So, uh, you know, that was, that was awesome. And then um, strength, uh, I'm back with Leanne and um, she did a light um, weights um, and arms. Um, and it was, um, I mean, it was brilliant. She ended up carrying on that 80s um, theme um, and she played Whitney Houston's How Will I Know, um, Thomas Gold's Pump Up the Jam, Alex Mighty's um, radio edition of In the Air Tonight. And she ended it off with a little bit of Sam Smith. Um, and I have to tell you, I'm still struggling to wash my hair <laughs> after that arms oh, workout. Yeah, still sore. It was tough. It was a I really, like really tough arms workout. Um, She's one of my favorites for arms toning. Isn't for, she? For I think so too. For content. those 10 minute arms yeah. toning. I'm telling you, I love her 10 minute because she, she's fun. She plays good music, but they're hard. They're hard. She um, definitely gave Kendall a little bit of a shout out because we did a little bit of punching. Um, and so she yeah. called Kendall out on that, which was um, kind of cute. And um, and then I did have to add one of the um, Bowie workouts, Bowie workouts, I should say, excuse me, uh, which is, uh, which was, which, yeah, which that's my, that's my accent. That's my South African accent coming out there. Um, but he did, uh, you know, I, as I said earlier, I love his 10 minute stretches. This one was, you know, it was just something new for me to add into my, into my repertoire. I do love to stretch. I do a lot of stretching, especially as I've been running more, my back has been bothering me. And I found that doing, you know, the 10 minute stretches have been awesome. Um, so I didn't mind the remixes. I didn't mind the DJ, you know, the DJ remixes of um, Bowie's songs, but um, I, you know, absolutely um, loved it. So yeah, those are mine. Cool. All right. Well, I've got a few. So I'm going to start off with, with one normally uh, meditation. So Sunday, my legs Look at were you, just- John they- Pruitt. <laughs> <laughs> Sunday, my legs just felt beat to shit from, you know, doing a lot of tread stuff, um, uh, boot camp with, uh, Adrian, my quads were killing me. So I just figured I'd do a 10 minute, uh, meditation and Cody recently did a 10 minute seasonal meditation from Friday, January 7th. Um, yes. and so it was just a nice, you know, I just sort of sat up on the bed, you know, Sunday afternoon and did that and, you know. Get a nice relaxing voice. So um, that's how I earned my blue dot on Sunday. And just, you know. I love it, John. It that's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Good for you. Um, and then moving on to something a little more challenging. So Adrian, like I mentioned, he had a 30-minute trap tread boot camp from Friday the 14th. Um, I felt like there was a lot of quad dominant work there. But, I mean, he's, he's, he's definitely one of the tougher tread strength. Um, instructors, but um, some good tunes, Lil Wayne, Meg Thee Stallion, Jay Balvin, were, you know, some of my favorites. Um, and then staying with, staying on the tread, a uh, 20 minute hike with Selena from Monday the 17th. Um, she, she played Taylor Swift's Lover, which is a good tune. And then um, my personal fave from that one, Cat Stevens' Peace Train was fun ah, to hear nice. that here uh, d- you know during the hike that was my personal favorite she also revealed uh what her wedding song will be um with her husband uh with her fiance rather uh because they're getting married uh in march actually which i didn't oh, know wow. um oh. but you gotta take you gotta take take the hike to find out it's a chris stapleton tune um i believe if memory serves but she did reveal that during um the middle of the hike um and she did say her, her band is is learning it you know, for the reception. Um, and then staying on the tread, Matt Wilpers, I did a 30 minute intervals. It was actually, it's labeled beginner, um, from Tuesday, the 18th. 
um, which is just the intervals stuff. And Matt's a great coach, uh, trainer, but it's a great way to increase your strength and endurance on the tread, these interval runs. But I had, I had talked shit to another Peloton member. Um, her name's Gloria. Her, she goes by the leaderboard name chased by shadows, but, um, mm -hmm. she normally doesn't work out. She works out in the evening. I think she's, she probably has an office job, um, that she goes to. So she doesn't get, get to work out live during the day. But she recently got the Peloton tread. She lives in um, Texas. It's so good. I was yeah. talking smack and I was like, yeah, you want to get smoked? You want me to smoke you on the tread? So we had scheduled a date to run live that Tuesday morning with Matt. And I was I was holding my own at the beginning there for the first few minutes. And then and then, you know, quickly I, I ran out of steam. I couldn't I couldn't keep up at, at the, the pace I was running. Um, and she easily she easily beat me. But it was fun because um, I, like I haven't awesome. done that yeah. many. Yeah, I haven't done that many runs, uh, that many tread classes with Matt. You know, I have my other favorites that I like on the tread platform, uh, but that was a good one. You know, it definitely was a fun was a fun class. And then rounding it out, going to the bike now, uh, Emma Levewall, her forty five minute Hidden Hills ride from Thursday, uh, the twentieth. Uh, it was mainly EDMs, tough tough ride. Hidden Hills, um, you know, definitely some challenging, some some lots of climbs in that one. Um, but yeah, she she brought her A game. You know, the hair was up in the bun, so you know she she came to work. Uh, yeah, but that yeah. was a, a good, challenging ride. So those are mine. That's that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, actually, on a, on a Matt Wilpers note, I guess he's on his way to Costa Rica. I saw that he had posted oh, yeah. that he was stuck in Miami. Uh, I guess his flight was canceled. Uh, um, and your and Gloria is a huge Matt Wolpers fan because she oh god told she's in, she'd she's like to marry <laughs> she'd like to marry him. <laughs> she's always so, posting um, about why hasn't Matt followed me on Instagram yet? <laughs> too funny, too funny. But yeah, so I guess Matt will be off the platform for a little bit um, as he yeah, has fun. That was in Costa I think Rica. that was his. That that run, I think that was his last class before he went on vacay. So yeah, sounds good. Hopefully he's sounds down in Costa good. Rica now as we as we speak uh, as this episode airs, and he's uh, yeah. he's soaking up the rays. And he got he got out and he got out. Yeah, because I did. I yeah. said, "Oh my gosh, you're in Miami. I'm in Miami." And he laughed. He goes, "You want to meet up?" <laughs> I'm like, "Okay, yeah." <laughs> <laughs> um he's very he's very he's such a cute guy such a cute guy yeah and i guess that nice. pretty much wraps it up here we thought it was going to be a quick episode that we could get in but i just it just we can't help it <laughs> we can't help it <laughs> um but that was um that was awesome yeah i mean disappointing how you know the show started and in, in knowing that there's some you know some trying times ahead for peloton but i have full faith that we will get to the other side of this and they'll get their, um, they'll get their stuff sorted and hopefully, um, everybody will be happy once again. So, um, yeah, yeah. I guess that pretty much wraps it up. John, anything more from yep. you? No, nope, that about does it. All right. Well then from me here down in Florida, um, Thanks for watching. Thanks for taking the time to um, have a listen. We love having you along. Yes, definitely um, send us a review. Tell us what you think. Tell us what we did wrong. Tell us what we did right. Tell us what you want to hear. Um, we'd love to hear that. And hopefully next week I will have tread news for you as I am back in Maryland. <laughs> so um, see you all next week. Bye for now. And for me in Michigan. Appreciate you tuning in, listening, uh, watching us here. And as always, we will see you on the leaderboard. Thank you for watching Pello Buddy TV, your source for everything Peloton, by the community, for the community. Work out with us using the Pello Buddy TV leaderboard tag and find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Pello Buddy. Don't forget that we have a podcast available so that you can listen to us while on the move. Just search for Pello Buddy TV on any major platform and hit the subscribe button so you never miss an episode.